I'm going to be employing a couple different methods to get these walls straight. This wall was way out of whack. I mean, I have places that are over a half inch out of plumb in only like five feet. So these studs, this wall really leans in. And one of the methods I'm going to employ is called sistering. And sistering is just taking a piece of dimensional lumber like this, and you basically just put it right next to the adjoining stud and you can make it go in or out, whichever way you want to make the wall straight. You fasten it in and you're good. So I'm gonna be doing that on one, so I give you a good example of doing that. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is show you how to rip. So this is just a two by four that I've ripped down. And I'm gonna show you how to use these as furring strips to do the same thing. One of the tools that's really helpful when you're trying to do this is one of these laser levels. And this is a DeWalt, it goes for about 160 bucks. It has the two axes on it, so it has both the vertical line and then it has the horizontal plane too. Uh, but I'm just using uh, the vertical line for right now. And I'm shooting a line and I'm making sure that I'm square. I wanna make sure that my laser line is square with the walls, which I've done. You can see my laser line right here so I have a nice square there. And after I've determined that that's square, I, I took a measurement from, I took two inches right here from the bottom plate. And then I took two, the same measurement, two inches off of the bottom plate right there and shot my laser line. Now that laser line is going all the way up to the ceiling. And if at any point in the studs, I put my finger or tape measure. Now I got that same plumb line, square line running off of there. So now that I got my two inch measurement, I'm gonna use that two inches as a baseline for finding out where all of the studs are. So all I need to do is subtract two inches from my measurement off of the stud, like this one right here. This one right here is showing two and three sixteenths. Now all I need to do is transfer, I just transferred a mark right here on my stud at three sixteenths. And what I'll do is, is continue all the way up. You see I already measured quarters because I'm a step ahead here. And you can see how I got to, how I got my quarter inch because it's two and a quarter right there. So I'm using, subtracting two inches to get my quarter inch right there. So what I, I do is I continue to do that on all of my studs and I, I'm doing about a foot apart and that, that helped me out here. You can see I got, I went from 3 sixteenths, quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, and on up to the top. This one here, I have, I have an eighth inch right here. It's kind of hard to see. And then, I have a quarter, I wrote a quarter inch right there. Five sixteenths right here. Three, three eighths right here. Seven sixteenths, half inch, seven sixteenths. Now I know how much I need to be furring out on each stud. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is transfer the marks that I made on here. This one is seven sixteenths right here. So I'm just gonna take my, my new two by four I'm just going to transfer I'm just going to transfer the measurements onto my 2x4. This one here is 3/8 and then and I got 7/16 here and 7/16 here. Man, how much better would it be if we went to the metric system instead of doing 7 sixteenths and half inch and 3 eighths and 5 sixteenths? Let's make a change. It has to happen sometime, right? Eventually, we're going to go to the metric system. We have to, right? It's just so much easier. So anyways, why not now? Let's move to the metric system. Whoever's in charge of that, who the heck is in charge of that? Actually, the tradespeople should be in charge of it. So. Somebody start a petition or something, I don't know. Okay, so you can see there, I have my measurements transferred over to my two by four. 
Okay, so now that I have the measurements that I need, I'm gonna go ahead and just make little marks. Okay, so you can see there's my eighth inch mark. There's my quarter inch mark, five sixteenths, seven sixteenths, half inch, seven sixteenths all the way up there. Now I'm just gonna take my six foot level and connect the dots basically. Give myself a nice Sharpie line on here. Drew my line, I go from an eighth inch here, quarter inch, five sixteenths all the way down. Got a nice Sharpie line and I've clamped the two by four to my table. Now I'm gonna use my skill saw to make a nice rip all along there. And some of you I know are wondering, like, why did you cut that inside all of the sawdust? Well, I got a really nice air scrubber set up, and a lot of you guys have been asking about that. So I'll show you a little bit about my air scrubber setup. I actually bought this used from a rental yard, so I don't even know where to get it. I've never done an internet search on them, but they're really nice. They, they use two filters, plus they also have a HEPA filter. So they filter everything out. Now I could probably be running this without any filters because I have it vented outside as a negative pressure fan, but uh, it works really good. I don't know, I could have cut these outside, but there's a lot of stairs <laughs> and I would keep going up and down, taking measurements and this and that. So I don't know, you tell me, what would you do? Would you set up outside or would you try to make your cutting in here? I always think, you know, when there's sets of stairs and going through and opening doors and going in and out, I try to get as much as material and tools up in the room that I'm working in and then work from there and it makes it a lot quicker. The air scrubber works really well. So I don't know, you tell me, leave it in the comment section below. But now that I have my furring strip cut, you can see it, it cut really nice. I got a nice clean cut on here. And when I put it up on my wall and I take my level, it's completely plumb now, plumb and flat. Looks great, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these tacked up. Uh, what I'm gonna use is this DeWalt finish nailer. This is a 15 gauge angled finish nailer, cordless, really nice. You don't have to set a up a compressor. And if I were to try to screw these furring strips in, they would probably just split. So I need, just need to get them tacked up uh, before I screw my wall board into it. I don't really need them fastened real hard to um, the stud. I just need them tacked, so I'm gonna be using this and I'll get it where I want it and I'll go ahead and tack it up. I got it tacked up, I'll check it again. And I am looking really good, really, really good. This, this came out really nice. I'll tack the rest of them up and then I'll show you how to do the sister stud. Okay, so sistering is pretty simple. One thing that you do need to keep in mind is that a new 2x4 will be bigger than an existing 2x4. So usually they're like an eighth inch bigger. So you may need to rip down the sister to fit into the stud bay all the way against your siding or stucco. You don't want that out proud if it's not supposed to be. But what I'm doing is I'm just using the scrap that I ripped one of the furring strips off so it's plenty narrow to fit in the opening. I'm going to use the same concept with my laser line. I'm going to put the sister in line with the bottom plate. That's where I'm going to start and I know I'm out of plumb this way. So I'm just going to take my, my finish nailer and tack one in at the bottom where it's supposed to be. That, oh. <laughs> I just bumped my laser line. I need to reset that. 
All right, so now that my sister is tacked in with the finish nailer just down at the bottom so that it's even with the bottom plate, that's my gauge. Now this, you can see this sister goes in and out so I can just get this plumb and we'll be good to go. So I'm just gonna set my level on here. Right there, that looks pretty good. And I'll just use my gun to just tack it in again. Put a couple in there so it doesn't move. And let's see how I did here. So there's my sister. There's my sister, nice and plumb there. And you can see from this side, now you can really see from this side this is my reference point. This is the two inches off of the laser line. And as I go up, you can really see, you can really see how out of plumb this stud is. You can see I actually caught my laser line right there, right on the two mark. So there's my sister, and there is my other stud, a good five eighths out right there and then it kind of goes back up right there so that's a sister and the thing with the sister i'm going to need to fasten this even though i just tacked it in with my finish nailer i'm going to sink some screws in every 24 inches or so two sets to give that sister some structural strength so you see i got my sisters there let's see how i did on this furring strip See, much better, huh? So the last thing I'm gonna show you here is I'm gonna use some cardboard shims on that inside one. Okay, so this is the easiest way of all is to use these cardboard shims. You can find these in the drywall section at your home improvement store. And I'm gonna be using uh, my staple gun. This is a DuoFast CS5000 3.8 stapler. And you know, these tools that I'm using, I'm not sponsored by any of these tool manufacturers. You see a lot of DeWalt stuff. I don't know, I just like the yellow and black. You can see the logo on my hat, so I buy it. DeWalt doesn't give me anything to use their tools. DuoFast doesn't. So just keep that in mind. These are just tools that I like. If you like them, great. And if you like another brand, that's awesome too. Whatever gets the job done. You know, I'm not even against using like Ryobi or some really cheap tool. If it's something that I don't use that often, why would I spend a bunch of money on an expensive tool if I'm not even going to barely use it? You know, if I'm using it like, you know, once every couple months, Ryobi is fine. But anyways, here, I'm going to go ahead and put these shims up. So I went ahead and made the same markings, like I'm a 16th here, 16th. I'm pretty much a 16th, and then it goes up a little more to an eighth there. So I'm just going to start with one. Yeah, so the nice thing about these guys is you can just cut them where you need them. Just use my it, just use my razor knife, score, cut it off where I need it. Just keep putting them as I need them. So you can see I went from uh, one shim there, and as I went up, I got them overlapped at two, and then when I got up here, then when I got up here, I went to three. So by doing that, I give myself a nice plumb wall going all the way up. Pretty easy with the cardboard shims. But yeah, so I did cardboard shim on that one. I did furring strips on these three. And then I sistered this last one. 
All right, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something from doing these three different methods to make a wall plumb and flat. If you did and you wanna show some support, go to tilecoach.com where you can pick up a t-shirt or one of these nice hats. Honestly, this is one of the most comfortable hats that I have. So I really enjoy bringing this video series to you. If you wanna see the other parts of this video, which include the demo, the self-leveling underlayment, and coming up, I'm gonna be putting a RSS foam pan in this one with cement board walls. I'm gonna be doing the waterproofing and all the tiles, so make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you see all of those videos as they come up, because as you know, YouTube just selects what videos to put on your home feed, and you might get one video and be like, where's the rest of the videos? Well, if you were subscribed and had your notifications on, you would see those videos pop up when I make them, and that's about once a week. Thank you again for being with me. I know there's a ton of other things you could be doing right now, but you're watching my video. And for that, I'm truly humbled and blessed. Last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.